Now, we might also come back here and think about, well, you know, I, I want that to be just a little bit hotter. So we could come back to our diffuse color and we could push that up a little bit more. That'll kind of give us a little more spread here, right? All of this becomes a kind of dancing game as you're design, you know, designing what the look is going to be to kind of find the right balance for the look that you want. And that's feeling pretty good. That's, I'm liking that a fair bit. Now, that's pretty decent so far, but I would also like this to have a little bit of movement in it. You know, one of the exciting things uh, here, especially in an effect like this, is if you have this sense of turbulence. Um, and we can kind of get at that by using a displace. Displace. So similar to how our lookup works, a displace top is going to be uh, a way of describing how um, our pixels, and in this case especially kind of black to white pixels, uh, push around other pixels here in our displays. And we, we can see that maybe with a ramp um, best. So let's go ahead and plug our ramp into our second input here on our displays. Oh, golly, it seems like that is really confusing. What on earth is going on? Um, let's go ahead and let's change our ramp to be horizontal instead. That's still very confusing. And our displace, let's change our displace weight to be zero and zero. <sighs> okay. Let's only displace in a single direction. So let's just displace in uh, an X, right? So if we turn that all the way up to one, what on earth is going on here? Well, if we uh, animate the phase here in our ramp, we can begin to see that a little bit more clearly, right? We can kind of see how the uh, our ramp here is describing how our pixels are pushed left or right. You know, this is a kind of displacement map. Uh, if you've ever worked in After Effects, this is a similar kind of idea. Right? We're kind of looking up from one texture into another texture how we want to push things around. Now we could do something like uh, radial, that's fun, or we could do circular. This is awfully fun, especially if we start to turn up, um, or turn down, excuse me, the periodicity of this. Right, We have this kind of like water ripply effect. Now you might notice, if we make this a little bit bigger, well, let's turn our phase maybe just to like one. So we've got this interesting kind of situation here, which is we've got some of these kind of like jaggy situations. We have these stair steppy places that show up. Um, and you know, we could think, well, oh, that's just surely that has to do with our, our resolution. So if we just turn the resolution up here, a little bit that'll fix it and you know that that does do some of it for us but we still have gosh we have these jiggity jaggity steppies in here so you know all right well maybe if i dither it maybe if i like uh, add a little bit of softening in there well that certainly makes it uh, a little less uniform but we still have these jagged steps in there so what what's going on well, a part of this, again, is related to our bit depth. We don't quite have enough of a range um, with our floating points, with our 8-bit uh, depth for our pixels to describe the kind of displacement that we want. So we might instead turn this up to 16 points, right? So at 16, that's a little bit better. We could even turn that up to 32. That might be, mm, I don't see a whole lot of difference there yet. Let's go ahead and turn this back down to 256. 256 by 256. And let's go back to 16 bit. So that's, that's better. That's certainly better than where we were before. And we might see that even more kind of clearly showing up for us here in our, uh, just in a, a, a horizontal lookup. And you're going to say, man, it still looks like all warbly. Well, you know, part of it is that we have this dither turned on. We've kind of introduced some noise into this. And this is really handy because it helps eliminate banding, 
right? So if you've ever seen any banding that happens in gradients, dithering often it helps to kind of break up that um, uniformity a little bit, which can be really helpful. Now, if we want just kind of clean displacement, um, that dither might not actually be what we're after, right? And if we went ahead and swapped this back to being a radial, excuse me, circular ramp, we can see better now how we've got something that's much kind of smoother and crisper, right? Ooh, that's much better. So that's, you know, understanding what's going on here is uh, really important. Um, you could do all sorts of fun things playing with this, right? Like you can imagine how much fun it would be to just kind of push on this a whole lot and go wild and crazy, especially in your displace. You could think about what's happening um, both in, you know, in two dimensions, right? Not only in your horizontal, but in your vertical. Um, there's lots of ways to kind of play with what you might end up with here, right? And like, again, play, push on all these parameters, get a sense of what they're doing. When in doubt, use the wiki, right? That's part of the reason the wiki is there, is to bring up those help documents and take a look at what is going on here, right? So it's place top causes one image to be warped by another image. Aha, great, right? This helps us kind of understand what's going on. Right, so I should also describe, I should clarify that, you know, while I've talked about this being a kind of uh, lookup, we're really looking at uh, a single channel, right? Our horizontals based on our red, our verticals based on our blue. Um, because we are dealing, in our case, uh, just with white and black, right, those channels are going to be the same. If you don't believe me, you can do something like this, you can convert it into a chop, and you can see that it's uniform all the way across. If there was some color in here, that would be different, and that you know would give you even more kind of space to push around a bunch of things uh, and play with that. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that for right now. We're going to add a noise top instead, and in our noise top, whoops, not a multiply, a noise top. Uh, in our noise top, we're going to go ahead and think about having something that's nice and tall, um, but thin. So say one pixel by 256 pixels. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this right here into my second input, aha, good. I don't want that to displace me vertically. I do want this to displace me horizontally, maybe not quite that much, but a little bit, there we go. I would also like this to be, mm, you know, that's, this is kind of like smoothie smoothie. But maybe if I turn down the periodicity on this, I can get something that's like a little bit more squiggly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we could even turn down the displace weight even more. So we just have this kind of like hint of what might be movement in there. Now, last but not least, what I might think about doing is I might think about animating this. Now, we could go through the whole process of creating a kind of complex animation network or a bunch of chops to do this uh, if we wanted to do it the most efficient way and what you would want to do for an installation. What I like to do when I'm just getting a sense of how something's moving and reacting is I use abs time. So here in our translate Z parameter, TZ, we're going to use the expression abs time dot seconds. Yeah, and that's moving just a little bit. Now, you might feel like that's moving a little too fast, so you might multiply that by uh, not point zero or not point one, oh, yeah, not point one, right? That's moving very slowly, but it is still moving. That might not be fast enough, maybe not by point five. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna give us kind of this smoky, drifty kind of displacement feel. And we are getting pretty doggone close to something that feels really good. 